No, 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 I said anxiously. I immediately realized that the odor was very similar to what we noticed when we entered the bunker for the first time, only much, much stronger. My Geiger counter started clicking, too. What's going on? Alex asked. Uh, that guy, Moroz, told me about this. He told me to run, I said. Just as I finished, the door shook in an enormous slam, sending dust flying in the air and slightly bending outwards. There was nowhere to run. We had a heavy steel door on one side and God knows what else on the other. I had no idea how we could survive. Luckily, Alex did. Do you still have the rope? He asked. Without hesitation, I tied it around one of the pumps. It wasn't easy at first, working with the rope with my hands shaking violently. But then another loud slam echoed through the room. One of the bolts that held the door was launched across the room. I felt a wave of cold run down my spine, and suddenly, I had just this one purpose. To tie the knot. Everything else just shut down in my head. I finished, and we dropped the end down the broken vent that Alex got dragged into before. We stepped inside and started sliding down the rope. I then heard another slam, and what I think was the door hitting the ground. Whatever it was was through. I slid faster, but the rope was starting to burn my hand. I lost grip and fell down a few meters, landing on top of another vent. It broke. I fell through, inside another corridor. Alex landed on top of me. It took us a few minutes to get back on our feet. I looked around and saw an orange tiled door. Decontamination. We were on level 3. There was no handle, only a button on the wall next to it. I pressed it, and the door opened after a few seconds. We entered a small room with a control panel. Using it, I closed the door behind us. Several jets then blasted us with air. A green light popped up, and then another door in front of us opened, inviting us deeper into the facility. I noticed that the control panel was stained with a smudge of fresh blood. Was Morose still alive and went through here? We couldn't go back, our only option was to see how deep the rabbit hole goes. It was supposed to be a clean room, but the place was wrecked even more than the upper levels. After some walking and searching, we found a room that looked like a makeshift infirmary. A few dozen beds separated with plastic curtains, some medical equipment, some beds still had information clipboards attached. Patient 2, Quarantine, Survey Team C, Patient in Coma, Observation Only, Do Not Interfere, Deceased, 728, Unknown, Patient 6, Quarantine, Survey Team C, Patient in Coma, Observation Only, Do Not Interfere, Deceased, 752, Unknown, Patient 19, Quarantine, On-Site Operative Assistant, First Contact with Survey Team C, Massive Blunt Force Trauma, Chest, Suspected Internal Damage, Cranial Concussion Suspected, Damage to Cervical Spine, Dislocated Left Shoulder, Fracture Left Humerus, Multiple Lacerations, Chest, Deceased, 404, Internal Hemorrhage. Patient 7, Quarantine, Survey Team C. Patient is unresponsive, mild to moderate frostbite. Observation only, do not interfere. Termination order, signed A. Moroz. There were some body bags on the other side of the room, empty. We searched the area and eventually ended up in the lower levels of the facility. There was this rotten smell all around. We entered a room and, well, there was this substance everywhere. On the walls, the floor, ceiling, everywhere. It was like flesh with tendrils or veins running across it, like from a Dead Space game. Then we found bodies attached to it. Dozens shriveled up like dead insects in a spider web. I think we should go back. Alex said anxiously. We turned around and went back, but then I heard some debris shift in the distance in the corridor we came from. Soon enough, one of these things crawled into the light emitted by my flashlight. It stood there for a while, staring at us with its blank eyes, and then it leapt forward. But then it fell to the ground, dead, and an empty shotgun shell did too soon after. I heard more of them making their way toward us in the distance, so we ran deeper into the facility. I shot a few more on the way, but then ran out of ammo. We eventually found a long, dark tunnel flooded with water. The things were almost on us, and I could see them claw along the walls behind us. We entered the tunnel. The water slowed us down considerably, and I awaited the worst, but then I noticed that they weren't following us. They wouldn't go inside the tunnel. We walked for, I don't know, an hour? Two? The water was ice cold. 
Luckily, it was only about knee-deep, so it wasn't too terrible. I already said that Alex didn't look well since I found him, but as we walked through, he seemed to be getting worse. He complained that his head hurt and he felt dizzy. His skin turned pale and he looked very weak. After some time, I had to support him, and later, he completely collapsed and fell unconscious. We couldn't go back, so my only option was to find a way to drag him through the water. It went like this for some time, but then I heard something far away in the direction we came from. A splash. I turned and shined my light into the black tunnel. It's nothing. I went to continue walking, but then I heard it again. Hello? I called, hoping to hear an answer. Maybe Morose was here, or did the creatures follow us after all? It's nothing. I quickened my pace, but it wasn't easy dragging another person and moving through knee-deep water. The sounds continued. They weren't getting closer or farther, they were just there. And then I reached the end. The tunnel was closed off with another massive steel door and no visible way to open it. It was a dead end. I stopped moving and listened. Those sounds, it wasn't just a splash, it was more like as if someone or something was wading through the water. I panicked and started banging on the door, calling for help. I had nowhere to go. The sounds were getting closer now. I saw waves in the water. I slowly turned again and looked into the tunnel. I saw nothing, heard nothing. Just silence and darkness. And then the familiar scent hit my nose. Ozone. And then I heard metal shift behind me, and the door opened. Dimitri! The familiar voice called. Morose. What? Who is- Oh no. You brought it here! He pulled me and Alex through the door and then shut it again as fast as he could. That's your friend? How? What happened to him? He asked as he looked at still unconscious Alex. I don't know. Are you okay? I asked back. He had a large gash across his face and his right eye. Well, no thanks to you, he responded. He noticed the makeshift bandages on Alex's arm and unwrapped it. What he had in his arm wasn't just a regular wound, it was a bite mark. That, Moreau said and pointed at it. Stand back. He stood up and drew his pistol. No, wait! At least tell me what's going on! He's gonna be dead in a few minutes, and this will make it easier. For him too, but mostly for us. What? Please? Is there really nothing else we can do? I pleaded. He looked at me, looked at Alex, and then stood there, thinking for a moment. I was immediately relieved when he holstered his gun again. Okay, this might help him, he said, and dug up a case with a syringe from his backpack. It looked as if it was used recently and was only about half full of clear liquid. He injected Alex with the rest. It won't matter anyway, he said. What do you mean? Follow me. Take him too if you want. I'm not carrying him. I guess you've probably already figured out that all this had something to do with the disaster 30 years ago, he explained as we moved through the facility. The first machine we used was for the teleportation experiments. It wasn't powerful or reliable enough. We figured out that the whole thing wasn't as simple as it seemed. We weren't just teleporting one thing to a different place, we were transferring them between multiple parallel realities, but it was limited. We could only exchange two objects with equal mass between two identical places in two different realities. So they built a new machine here, and used a nuclear reactor to power it hoping that we could possibly move anything to any place between two given realities. We started exploring whole new universes. We saw worlds where the Germans won World War II, worlds where we destroyed each other, even worlds where life never evolved on Earth. But then, someone had this idea. If there were these parallel universes, what is between them? There was only one way to know, and that's when it went wrong, as I said. We should have been happy with what we had. We always want more, right? We tried to access this conduit reality, as they called it. But when they activated the machine, it stayed open. Something happened, and a portal was created. Independent from our machine, it was sustaining itself. So we sent a survey team in there. They came back after a few minutes, reporting all sorts of strange things and about how a strange feeling filled that space, how space and time themselves felt odd, even how some of them claimed to have seen themselves at different places at once. They wouldn't go back, even if threatened with all sorts of penalties. We sent a second survey team later. 
This one didn't come back at all, so we sent a third team to find them. They came back, but something wasn't right with them when they returned. Their minds were, like, erased. I pictured the blank stares of the creatures we fought on the way. Shortly after they returned, a massive burst of energy flowed out from the portal, straight up into the reactor. But that wasn't all. And you know all this because you took a sick day, right? I asked. I was at a different place in the facility. I'll never forget when they came to me, saying that something came through into our world. What was it? I asked. I don't know. N nobody knows. It was unlike anything we've ever seen. And it killed almost everyone here. Not just killed, it did stuff to people. You've seen. We're here. We entered a control room filled with computers and various controls and displays. Rose closed another blast door and sealed us inside. We need to close the portal. We've tried it before, but these things wouldn't let us. So where are they now? As soon as I heard that you went inside the facility and came back, I knew something was off. This place used to be full of them. At least one is still there. The smell of ozone. But a few years ago, anyone who went in wouldn't get past level one alive. But we've got this far, and I don't know why. That's what scares me. Something isn't right. I know that I'm asking for a lot, but we need to go inside the portal and use this. He emptied his backpack and took out a crude-looking contraption with all sorts of wires, coils, and other bits hanging from it. We need to place one end in the other reality and then return with the second end into ours. If it works, it might just cause the portal to collapse. And how do you know that the same thing that happened to the third team won't happen to us too? That's the thing. I don't. But I tell you this. You know how they built that concrete shield over the reactor? They weren't trying to seal the reactor. They were trying to seal this place to prevent whatever came into our reality from getting out. And a few years ago, the thing we feared most happened. The shield started cracking. They were trying to get out. So they built a new containment building recently, as you know. But for how long will this go on? Sooner or later, something will fail and they will get out. This might be our only chance to end this for good. How the hell did I get into this? I thought. I was just some random guy at the wrong place at the wrong time, but Moros was talking as if the fate of our world depended on me. But maybe he was right. Maybe whatever set of coincidence has brought us here, brought me here. Maybe me and Moros were the only people who could do what needed to be done. All right, let's do it, I said. We put on a pair of what looked like modified spacesuits left everything other than the device in the control room and entered the machine. We were in a dome-shaped chamber filled with complicated machinery. In the center, there was a sphere of white light. Above it, a black, hollow shaft going straight up with cracks and debris around the opening. We tethered ourselves to a steel rail and Moreau's walked forward into the sphere and vanished. After some hesitation, I did the same. I found myself in a place that I can't describe. There was no up or down, and I could walk in any direction. It looked empty, yet I could see countless, infinitely large shapes with billions of tiny, shiny dots on the surface. Here. Where are you? I called. Come, he said and grabbed me by the arm, seemingly out of nowhere. I noticed hundreds or thousands of other white spheres in the distance around us. Are those? Yes, portals from other parallel realities. Are we going to close them all? No, just ours. The others are not our problem. They will have to find their own way to handle it. We walked towards one distant shape. As with everything here, I struggled to describe it. It was like a fractal, the same shape repeating over and over and over again. I think this is it, Moreau said, and started doing something with the device. It beeped several times and then started making a high-pitched hum. Oh, no, 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 this isn't good, he continued. What's going on? Listen, I need you to take the other end and return. Once you're back, pull this switch and keep this button pressed until it activates. I picked up my end of the machine and watched as the wire started unreeling between the two. What about the key to the door out? I asked. There 
is no key. What? But you said that wasn't the plan. This was always the plan. I couldn't risk... He didn't finish. I saw something in the corner of my eye. Movement. Shit! Don't look at it! Go! Now! Run! Morose said, and I listened. I ran back, followed the line back into our portal with my eyes almost closed. I went through and placed the device on the ground, flipped the switch, and the device started producing a similar high-pitched noise. I pushed the button. For a second or two, nothing happened. And then, suddenly, the device or the portal let out an ear-piercing whine, an intense flash and a wave of heat, and then it was gone. Severed wires and tether line laid there on the ground, where the portal used to be. In the meantime, Alex woke up. He looked much better, and I told him what happened while he was out. We didn't know what to do now. We thought about going back and trying to cut the chain on the door outside again, but after what happened last time, we doubted that it could work. We probably wouldn't even get there alive at all. But then Alex had an idea. It took us several hours to figure out how the controls worked. It was heavily damaged and the reactor was obviously out of the question, but the generators above supplied enough power for a simple translocation, as they described it. All we needed to do is input a target vector. And then, a familiar clicking and a smell of ozone came. A powerful slam shook the whole room and left a large dent in the steel door that connected the control room with the rest of the facility. Fuck, not again! I yelled. What if we can use the machine to teleport out of here? I think I got it. They have some vectors written down here. We just need to add some height and we'll get above the ground. Alex explained. Make it fast! I said as the door shook in another slam. He did something and the controls lit up with alarms sounding. We ran to the core chamber and closed it behind us and just as we heard the control room door give way. We stood in the center and waited. Sparks and smoke filled the room as the machine did its thing. Please work. I heard another slam, and the door to the chamber broke off the wall and fell to the ground. I looked over, and then... Time froze. I didn't feel fear. I felt at peace. I felt as if I was just a step away from understanding everything. I wanted to stay here. Forever. A flash suddenly blinded me, and then I bumped my head into something. I opened my eyes and breathed in fresh air. We were laying upside down in a crater-like hole in the ground in a forest. We were out. We found our car after a few minutes. We saw several military helicopters fly in the opposite direction as we drove home. Alex checked into a hospital with a made-up story of an animal attack. He was okay in the end. We didn't talk about it again. It was over, and I thought our world was safe from whatever stayed at the other side of the portal. But when I finally returned home that day... I noticed something wasn't right. The old cherry tree that we used to play at when we were kids, it wasn't there. There was an apple tree instead. January 17th, 1985. We've managed to transport an apple today. However, I couldn't help but notice that the pattern of red and green skin on top was slightly different. We were transferring them between multiple parallel realities. Portals from other parallel realities. Are we going to close them all? No, just ours. The others are not our problem. They will have to find their own way to handle it. I think I'm not in the reality that I lived in before. I think that when we teleported out, we ended up in a different one. I can't stop thinking that the portal in this one might still be open. I think we aren't safe. <laughs>